don't stop. Brucellosis. It is also known as undulant fever, Malta fever, and Mediterranean fever. It is a highly contagious zoonosis caused by ingestion of unpasteurized milk or undercooked meat from infected animals, or close contact with their secretions. Brucella species are small, gram-negative, non-modal, non-spore-forming, rod-shaped, 
Cocobacilli, bacteria. They function as facultative intracellular parasites, causing chronic disease, which usually persists for life. Four species infect humans, B. abortus, B. canis, B. melitensis, and B. suis. B. abortus is less virulent than B. melitensis and is primarily a disease of cattle. B. canis affects dogs. B. melitensis is the most virulent and invasive species, it usually infects goats and occasionally sheep. B. suis is of intermediate virulence and chiefly infects pigs. Symptoms include profuse sweating and joint and muscle pain. Brucellosis has been recognized in animals and humans since the 20th century. Signs and Symptoms A graph of the cases of brucellosis in humans in the United States from the years 1993-2010 surveyed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention through the National Notifiable Diseases Surveillance System. The symptoms are like those associated with many other febrile diseases, but with emphasis on muscular pain and night sweats. The duration of the disease can vary from a few weeks to many months or even years. In the first stage of the disease, bacteremia occurs and leads to the classic triad of undulant fevers, sweating. Often with characteristic foul, moldy smell sometimes likened to wet hay, and migratory arthralgia and myalgia, joint and muscle pain. Blood tests characteristically reveal a low number of white blood cells and red blood cells, show some elevation of liver enzymes such as aspartate aminotransferase and alanine aminotransferase, and demonstrate positive Bengal Rose and Huddleston reactions. Gastrointestinal symptoms occur in 70% of cases and include nausea, vomiting, decreased appetite, unintentional weight loss, abdominal pain, constipation, diarrhea an enlarged liver, liver inflammation, liver abscess, and an enlarged spleen. This complex is, at least in Portugal, Israel, Syria, and Jordan, known as Malta fever. During episodes of Malta fever, malitococcemia, presence of brucelli in blood, can usually be demonstrated by means of blood culture in tryptose medium or albini medium. If untreated, the disease can give origin to focalizations or become chronic. The focalizations of brucellosis occur usually in bones and joints, and osteomyelitis or spondylodiscitis of the lumbar spine accompanied by sacroiliitis is very characteristic of this disease. Orchitis is also common in men. Diagnosis of brucellosis relies on 1. Demonstration of the agent, blood cultures in tryptose broth, bone marrow cultures, the growth of brucelli is extremely slow, they can take up to two months to grow and the culture poses a risk to laboratory personnel due to high infectivity of brucelli. 2. Demonstration of antibodies against the agent either with the classic Hudlison, Wright and Slash or Bengal Rose reactions, either with ELISA or the tumor Captoethanol assay for IgM antibodies associated with chronic disease. 3. Histologic evidence of granulomatous hepatitis on hepatic biopsy. 4. Radiologic alterations in infected vertebrae. The Pedro Pons sign, preferential erosion of the antero superior corner of lumbar vertebrae, and marked osteophytosis are suspicious of brucellic spondylitis. The consequences of brucella infection are highly variable and may include arthritis, spondylitis, thrombocytopenia, meningitis, uveitis, optic neuritis, endocarditis, and various neurological disorders collectively known as neurobrucellosis. Cause Granuloma and necrosis in the liver of a guinea pig infected with brucella suis. Brucellosis in humans is usually associated with consumption of unpasteurized milk and soft cheeses made from the milk of infected animals primarily goats, infected with B. melitensis and with occupational exposure of laboratory workers, veterinarians, and slaughterhouse workers. Some vaccines used in livestock, most notably B. abortus strain 19, also cause disease in humans if accidentally injected. Brucellosis induces inconstant fevers, miscarriage, sweating, weakness, anemia, headaches, depression, and muscular and bodily pain. The other strains, B. suis and B. canis, cause infection in pigs and dogs, respectively.
Overall findings support that brucellosis poses an occupational risk to goat farmers with specific areas of concern including weak awareness of disease transmission to humans and lack of knowledge on specific safe farm practices such as quarantine practices. Diagnosis Definite diagnosis of brucellosis requires the isolation of the organism from the blood, body fluids, or tissues, but serological methods may be the only tests available in many settings. Positive blood culture yield ranges between 40 and 70 percent and is less commonly positive for B. abortus than B. melitensis or B. suis. Identification of specific antibodies against bacterial lipopolysaccharide and other antigens can be detected by the standard agglutination test, SAT, Rose Bengal, 2 mercaptoethanol, 2 me, anti-human globulin, CUMS, an indirect enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA. SAT is the most commonly used serology in endemic areas. An agglutination titer greater than 1,160 is considered significant in non-endemic areas and greater than 1,320 in endemic areas. Due to the similarity of the O-polysaccharide of Brucella to that of various other gram-negative bacteria, e.g. Francisella tularensis, Escherichia coli, Salmonella urbana, Yersinia enterocolitica, Vibrio cholerae, and Stenotrophmonas maltophilia, the appearance of cross-reactions of class M immunoglobulins may occur. The inability to diagnose B. canis by SAT due to lack of cross-reaction is another drawback. False negative SAT may be caused by the presence of blocking antibodies, the prezone phenomenon, in the alpha-2 globulin, IgA, and in the alpha globulin, IgG, fractions. Dipstick assays are new and promising, based on the binding of Brucella IgM antibodies, and are simple, accurate, and rapid. ELISA typically uses cytoplasmic proteins as antigens. It measures IgM, IgG, and IgA with better sensitivity and specificity than the SAT in most recent comparative studies. The commercial Brucella CAP test, a single-step immunocapture assay for the detection of total anti-Brucella antibodies, is an increasingly used adjunctive test when resources permit. PCR is fast and should be specific. Many varieties of PCR have been developed, e.g. nested PCR, real-time PCR, and PCR ELISA, and found to have superior specificity and sensitivity in detecting both primary infection and relapse after treatment. Unfortunately, these are not standardized for routine use, and some centers have reported persistent PCR positivity after clinically successful treatment, fueling the controversy about the existence of prolonged chronic brucellosis. Other laboratory findings include normal peripheral white cell count, an occasional leukopenia with relative lymphocytosis. The serum biochemical profiles are commonly normal. Treatment Antibiotics such as tetracyclines, rifampin, and the aminoglycosides streptomycin and gentamicin are effective against brucella bacteria. However, the use of more than one antibiotic is needed for several weeks because the bacteria incubate within cells. Surveillance using serological tests, as well as tests on milk such as the milk ring test, can be used for screening and play an important role in campaigns to eliminate the disease. Also, individual animal testing both for trade and for disease control purposes is practiced. In endemic areas, vaccination is often used to reduce the incidence of infection. An animal vaccine is available that uses modified live bacteria. The World Organization for Animal Health Manual of Diagnostic Test and Vaccines for Terrestrial Animals provides detailed guidance on the production of vaccines. As the disease is closer to being eliminated, a test and eradication program is required to completely eliminate it. The gold standard treatment for adults is daily intramuscular injections of streptomycin 1G for 14 days and oral doxycycline 100 mg twice daily for 45 days, concurrently. Gentamicin 5 mg kg by intramuscular injection once daily for 7 days is an acceptable substitute when streptomycin is not available or contraindicated. Another widely used regimen is doxycycline plus rifampin twice daily for at least 6 weeks. This regimen has the advantage of oral administration. A triple therapy of doxycycline, with rifampin, and co has been used successfully to treat neurobrucellosis. 
doxycycline is able to cross the blood-brain barrier, but requires the addition of two other drugs to prevent relapse. Ciprofloxacin and Ciotrimoxisole therapy is associated with an unacceptably high rate of relapse. In brucellic endocarditis, surgery is required for an optimal outcome. Even with optimal anti-brucellic therapy, relapses still occur in 5 to 10% of patients with Malta fever. The main way of preventing brucellosis is by using fastidious hygiene in producing raw milk products, or by pasteurizing all milk that is to be ingested by human beings, either in its unaltered form or as a derivative, such as cheese. Prognosis The mortality of the disease in 1909, as recorded in the British Army and Navy stationed in Malta, was 2%. The most frequent cause of death was endocarditis. Recent advances in antibiotics and surgery have been successful in preventing death due to endocarditis. Prevention of human brucellosis can be achieved by eradication of the disease in animals by vaccination and other veterinary control methods such as testing herd slash flocks and slaughtering animals when infection is present. Currently, no effective vaccine is available for humans. Boiling milk before consumption, or before using it to produce other dairy products, is protective against transmission via ingestion. Changing traditional food habits of eating raw meat, liver, or bone marrow is necessary, but difficult to implement. Patients who have had brucellosis should probably be excluded indefinitely from donating blood or organs. Exposure of diagnostic laboratory personnel to brucella organisms remains a problem in both endemic settings and when brucellosis is unknowingly imported by a patient. After appropriate risk assessment, Staff with significant exposure should be offered post-exposure prophylaxis and followed up serologically for six months. Recently published experience confirms that prolonged and frequent serological follow-up consumes significant resources without yielding much information, and is burdensome for the affected staff, who often fail to comply. The side effects of the usual recommended regimen of rifampicin and doxycycline for three weeks also reduces treatment adherence. As no evidence shows treatment with two drugs is superior to monotherapy, British guidelines now recommend doxycycline alone for three weeks and a less onerous follow-up protocol.